G'day guys, how's it going? It's Cody from CycleTravelOverload.com and in today's video, I'm gonna do a review on this B17 Brooks leather saddle. So I've had this saddle for over 10,000 kilometers and as you guys can see, it's worn in pretty well to my bum. You know, when I'm sitting on this, my sit bones are just having a joy, you know? They're just so comfy when I get in that saddle. But yeah, I just wanted to do a review and just share my experience and, and what um, experience I've had firsthand with this saddle so if you're looking at getting one for yourself then uh yeah you can uh, make some informed decisions so uh before i got a saddle like this i would always get like saddle sores rashes and my bum would always hurt after a few months of touring and i kind of got sick of it so i really wanted to make a good investment paid up for this thing but to be honest it was completely worth it because i'm able to now ride my bike on, you know, multiple month long bike tours with no cycling shorts or pad padded shorts. I'm able to wear just like casual shorts, what I'm wearing right now, and not get any chafing, not get any, any saddle sores or anything like that. Just jump on this thing and uh, pretty much ready to go. But there is one thing, there is a little bit of a break in period. And, and before I got this saddle, I had this idea from what other people were saying that it takes like a thousand plus miles, thousand plus kilometers to wear this thing in. But I was surprised because it only took a few hundred, barely 200 kilometers to get this to break in. And break in, I mean, you know, when I'm riding the saddle, I don't feel that much pain in the saddle. I don't know if it's my pain intolerance to putting up with this because I've had to put up with worse saddles before. I generally felt like this saddle after, you know, two days on tour or so, it was worn in and was molded. Not 100% molded, but it definitely felt very comfortable. And that break-in phase really, for me, didn't take that long at all. So if you guys want to read the full write-up that I did, check out my blog post at cycletraveloverload.com. Head over there and you can read all about what I have to say in detail about this saddle. But let's get into the pros and cons. Okay, so one of the pros to this saddle is the custom fit. The way that it molds to most people's bums makes it essentially universal. So you can get this, this is just a standard size B17. They make them a bit wider than usual. So then most people's sit bones can fit in these saddles. And once they're molded, they are custom fit to your bum, which means that they're super comfortable. I even had CP, my mate, uh, ride this and he said it felt super comfortable and it wasn't even molded to his bum. So that just goes to show like the versatility and the utility of these saddles. Apart from the added comfort these saddles provide, reducing that feeling of a numb bum, the saddle, it's also guaranteed to last for a very long time. I've heard people having these saddles for over 10 years plus, and if you just keep maintaining them by, you know, adding um, some proof hide every, you know, six months, maybe like twice a year, and keeping it out of the rain as well, as much as possible. I must say, I've had this in wet weather a lot of times, um, just from being on tour without having any covers or anything on it. But I guess I should be a little bit more careful because over time, that's the main thing that's gonna wear down these saddles quicker. Another thing is Brooks, it's been around for a long time, you know, since like the 1800s or something. So it's a reputable brand and it's just guaranteed quality. And they've also been making this style of saddle for so many years now that, you know, they haven't changed much. So it goes to show that it, it just works. Like the design and everything just works on this thing. So it also does have quite a lot of flex. You would think it'd be hard and stuff, but it has a bit of flex in the saddle if I push down here, you can see that flex, which is great for, you know, absorbing the bumps and things like that. So if you're riding, you hit some bumps, this thing's just going to sort of move around slightly and provide just that little bit extra added comfort. Also, this saddle is offered in a variety of different styles, colors, and designs as well. So you can get a cutout option, which has a nice chunky cutout. Um, which helps relieve pressure here. Um, I do like that they have these holes here which provide some, you know, ventilation and I guess a little bit of rel relief of pressure there when you're sitting down. They also have the Brooks uh, Flyer Saddle which has like these springs at the back here which also add for that extra comfort on tough roads. They have one that's made of titanium as well, which is incredible. Then they also come in like a narrower size. Um, that Imperial one is, that's what it's called. The Imperial is that cutout one there. And then I think they also have 
the Brooks Special as well, which is a slightly different variation. And they also come in like heaps of different colors as well. I just went with like this standard brown. I think it's like a, a honey or something like that. All right, so some of the cons. So first off the bat, like these are fairly expensive saddles. You can get much cheaper alternatives out there. Um, if you are looking for alternative options, um, check out that blog post that I mentioned. I have a couple there that are like 30 bucks. And they, you know, can be compared to a Brooks saddle, but you're probably, you know, not going to be as good a quality. Um, but these things, they can run, you know, $100 plus. I think Amazon sells these for like 83 bucks or something like that, if I'm correct. And you can buy like the proof hide, which you're going to use, you know, twice a year. That comes in at like $8.25 or something like that, which is just, you know something that you really should get just to guarantee this longevity and the quality of the saddle. Also, if you're looking to cut weight and get a light saddle, this is probably not your best bet because it is a bit heavier than most other saddles. And also some people don't like them because they are unpadded. Some people just like saddles that are padded um, and gonna have that instant sort of comfort and people don't really like to spend time breaking it in, which, which is one of the reasons why this saddle is a little bit unpopular with some people is because they just don't, you know, wait out that couple of hundred kilometer period of breaking in and they just get a sore bum as soon as they hop on these things, which is definitely expected. And that's something to consider is you're gonna get a sore bum in the first couple of rides on this thing until it contours to your bum. And lastly, they do require some kind of care. It's not like you can just chuck the saddle on and just forget about it and not care about it. Um, it's definitely going to wear down a lot faster than what you would if you were again going to add that proof hide, you know, a couple of times a year. Um, I mean, it's just a little task that you do twice a year that really isn't that much of a hassle. And, and especially if it's going to extend the life of the saddle itself, it's definitely worth it. So a few things you should consider if you do end up getting this saddle. Be aware that if you do flip the bike over and um, you're going to take off a wheel or something like that, try not to get the saddle to rub here on the ground because people have had problems with like um, this part here wearing off and it just looks terrible. So just take care with that. Make sure when you flip it over it's on grass or some kind of soft area or just do it the proper way and flick it off without flipping it around. <laughs> also, when fitting the saddle to your bike, it's important to get the nose pointing slightly upward because if you have it too far down, the saddle naturally will just have you sliding off the front. So having the nose up a little bit higher, you know, sort of sits you in the position a bit better and, and it just holds your body position. Also, some people have mentioned that these rails aren't long enough. Uh, there is longer rail options on some saddles, but you don't want the, the rails way too long that it's just going to like bend and stuff. And you know, to be honest, I've had no problems with these rails. They've been fine. But yeah, guys, that is my quick review of the B17 Brooks saddle. In my own opinion, I really think it's the best saddle you can get for a touring bike or any type of biking adventure that includes multiple days of riding, day in, day out, 100Ks every day. Being in the saddle all day long, this is going to provide more comfort than most other saddles would. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and also make sure you subscribe to stay up to date for other videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.